Big Ange and Celtic have done it again. They've dipped into the Asian market and they have signed He Young Joo Oh from Suwon Samsung Blue Wings. Welcome back, guys. Celtic with another signing, another signing from the continent of Asia. And we all know that Big Ange's favourite cuisine is Asian. Well, actually, we don't. We know it's McDonald's. Just look at the size of them. But still, when it comes to footballers, it seems to be that he likes to bring in the Asians. He likes a little bit of Asia. And he's proven that again when he signed Huang Joe Oh for $2.5 million on a five-year deal. Now, funnily enough, this wasn't Celtic's number one South Korean target in this window. They were originally after Gu Sung Chu. But I can tell you what. I think Angie's made the right decision. Well, actually, I don't know. I've signed this guy in FIFA and he started bad, but then he got really, really good. So maybe, maybe Gun Sung Chu is the better striker. He appears to be, he's higher up in the, the national team, like in order. You know, he's in striker options. He's like number one, essentially, whereas the other guy, the other guy, fun fact, apparently, supposedly gave up his spot in the World Cup team. So a uh, son from Tottenham could join and apparently he was paid a personal fee for that, which I think is a little bit weird. But anyway, regardless, the 21-year-old does join Celtic for five years on a £2.5 million deal and I'm sure will be just a, a straight replacement for Giamakis. And he's, he's kind of got the similarities of Giamakis from a physical standpoint. Albeit, uh, Hyungjoo Oh is a bit taller than Giamakis. I believe Giamakis is like 5'11", maybe 5'10". Hyungjoo Oh is 6'6", six, six, so yeah, he looks to be a player that can offer Celtic a little bit more physical presence in the box. That's something that Kyogo can't really do. As good as Kyogo is, and he's very good, in terms of height, sometimes you just need, sometimes there'll be games where you just need a, a more physical presence in the box, especially in Scottish football. You know, a lot of times you can be playing against teams with 10 men behind the ball, and sometimes you have to. Sometimes you, you literally just need to fire it into the box. Sometimes you need to go route one, and I don't think Kyogo really offers you that option, but maybe this guy can come in, and maybe he can offer Celtic, you know, something different in terms of attack. Now, he does join from Suwon Samsung Blue Wings. Currently, this season for them, he's made 36 appearances, scoring 13 goals. That's not a bad return, not a bad return at all. So he's averaging more than a goal every three games. It's by no means great. <laughs> I mean, it's by no means great. It's not as good as Kyogo, but it's still a pretty decent record. And who knows? Maybe, maybe he's up against better quality. Def I'm not saying the South Korean league's better than the Scottish league, but I don't know. Maybe it's tougher being an attacking player in the South Korean league. Maybe some of those appearances are from the bench. I'm not too sure, but yeah, 13 goals and, and 36 appearances. You know, it's it's not bad, but it's not exactly great. But what it does tell you is he can score goals, and if he does get the opportunity. I'm sure he will score goals. However, I can't see him coming in and being straight into the starting 11. For me, he's coming in, he's going to be number two. If Giamakis does stay, and I don't think he will, will he be above Giamakis in the pecking order? I would have to assume so, because let's be honest, Giamakis looks like his future's not at the club, so clearly you would want to favour the guy who has just signed a five-year deal. You would want to, you know, give the advantage to the guy that's committing his long-term future to the club rather than the guy that is looking to get away from the club. So I do think he's going to come in. I do think he will initially be second to Kyogo, but if he can start performing, if he can start scoring when he does get, you know, opportunities in the cup or when he comes on as a sub or when Kyogo gets rested, if he can start banging in goals, then who knows? There's no reason why this guy can't go on to be Celtic's number one striker. But you know what? I can joke about Ange. I actually like Ange. I think he makes a lot of good signings. So fair play to him. I think this will be another good signing. And if I support it, if I supported Rangers, I would be pissed off. I mean, I, I would really be annoyed. We, we, you look at Celtic's business in the last couple of transfer windows, then you look at Rangers' business, and Celtic just seem to be on the front foot. They seem to go out and they seem to be signing players for the now. Uh, you know, now and then, it's like the, the signing players are currently good. You know, the signing players that are young, players that are showing what they've got at this moment in time right now. Whereas I feel like a lot of Rangers signings, they're just kind of signed players that 
like Aaron Ramsey, you know, he, living on his past record, living on his you know history. Todd Cantwell was great four seasons ago, but let's be honest, Todd Cantwell's done nothing in the past couple of years. So, yeah, no, I mean, if you look at the two the two clubs, there's definitely a difference in the the, the transfer policy. I feel like Celtic are, are going down like a, a youth direction and they're, tr they're trying to sign younger players. I mean, look at Alistair Johnson, Kobe Ash is still pretty young. They're, they're signing younger players that are currently breaking through, you know, players that are looking good. Uh, Rangers are signing players that have been around a long time and maybe have a bit of a reputation. I, I don't know, but personally, man, I, I think Celtic are making the much better business. In the t and I, I say much better, but Rangers have only done one. Rangers have made one signing, so it's hard to compare. Uh, it's hard to compare. I mean, Todd Cantwell could, he could, let's be real, he could turn up to Scotland. He could be the best player in the league. He could be. But it's you know there's no guarantee. Um, that, you know He hasn't really shown anything in, in years, so I think it's a bit, it's very optimistic, you know, and uh, maybe a little bit delusional to believe that he's suddenly going to come to Scotland and start, you know, showing the same sort of performances that he that he was three, four years ago, three, four seasons ago. So I don't know, but I mean, in terms of this transfer market, I, I'd got, I, I would give Celtic a, an A. I think they've been great. You know, I think they went out, they got. Their, their business done early. They've been after a striker. Originally, yeah, they wanted Gu Song Chu, but looks like they couldn't get him. He was interested in maybe other clubs. Mainz had an offer for him. There was a team in, I think, Minnesota in America. The MSL were looking for him as well. So he was kind of delaying it. Whereas um, the current guy, Hyung Ju Oh, pretty much came out and was like, yeah, I'd love to move to Celtic. Celtic's my dream move. And it seems like he is really, really eager to uh, to come here. And he, I think he's even said that he wants to play under Ange Postacoglu. So, yeah, it looks like a good move for the player. Looks like a good move for Celtic. And I guess we'll see how how he comes on and we'll see what his career turns out to be. But I, I do think that I do think this will be a really good signing for Celtic. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see him in action, I guess. But who knows? Apart from that, it's been pretty quiet in the transfer window. Not a lot happening at the moment. Ryan Porteous still hasn't decided if he's leaving Hibs or what. Potentially he could stay and then just run down his contract until the end of the season. Plus, if he does that, then he'll probably have a better, you know, he'll probably have better options in terms of choosing his next club. So just depends whether Ryan Porteous wants to spend the last, you know, five months of his contract at Hibs. What have Hibs got to play for? Absolutely nothing. Uh, they're not in the final of the League Cup. They've been pumped at the Scottish Cup. They ain't going to do anything in the Scottish Premiership. So, yeah, I mean, Ryan Porte is it's not really looking good for the guy, is it? So, we'll see what happens, guys. We will see what happens. But it is official. Celtic have signed this South Korean star. Well, I guess we'll find out whether or not he is a star. And he's just one of many Asians that Ange has brought to Celtic. And you know what? It's working for him. I tell you what. Every Asian player that Ange has brought to Celtic has been really, really good. Apart from Ida Gucci, who... You know, I'm not going to say he's a bad player because we just haven't really seen him. You know, it's, it's hard to judge Ida, Ida Gucci because he hasn't really had a chance. He's made the odd appearance here and there. But due to injuries and also due to the fact that probably the position he plays in is the hardest position to break into, considering it's where Callum McGregor plays. So I think it was always going to be more difficult for Ida. You look at the Japanese boys that came in. Ida Gucci was probably always, you know gonna find it most difficult out of them all to break into the team just due to the position that he plays in and that's proven to be the case so but apart from him I mean all the other Japanese lads look good now they've brought in a South Korean as well so it looks like the Asian invasion is well in place here at Celtic Park anyway guys that's good day let us know your thoughts down below are you happy to see Hyung Joo Oh in a Celtic shirt and I guess we'll find it soon whether it is any good or not but that's it catch you in the next one guys till then peace